QuickBooks Desktop 2023 Bank Reconciliation Reports Month Number One. Well, let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks desktop, get great guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation, going through the setup process we do every time, maximize in the home page, going into the view drop down. We've got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial. Let's take a look at the P to the L, range into the change and just for the month of Jan 010123 to 12, not 12, 013123, Jan, I said Jan. Customize it, fonting to the number and to changing to 14, O, yes, K. Then we're gonna go to the reports drop down again, company and financial this time that balance sheet you know where we're going customizing it 010123 to 013123 fonting numbering changing 14 okay doki yes ck there's the process that we do every time we've been doing the bank reconciliation tying out as of january 31st our banking balance to the bank statement noting that it's not going to match typically if you have a full service accounting system because of the difference being the outstanding checks and deposit deposits which we can see by going to our banking drop down looking at the reconcile this is our checking account as of the 31st that's the ending balance the beginning balance is off because that's our beginning balance problem we've been discussing for the first bank reconciliation continuing on noting over here if everything was perfect if it was the second bank reconciliation as we'll see next time the easier reconciliation going forward the beginning balance would be thirty thousand, and tying out to what we would have here and then the additions and the subtractions would be the same resulting in our cleared balance being the same as the bank balance which does not mean once again that our book balance is the same as the cleared balance the cleared balance represents the beginning balance which cleared in prior months and all the stuff that we checked off it doesn't include the stuff that's not checked off the stuff that's not checked off isn't wrong it's stuff that we know about before the bank knows about it because we entered it before the bank had the information to do it on their end. I'm going to hide the, the other stuff past January. So these unchecked off stuff that was written before the cutoff before January 31st will be the reconciling items. So just a quick recap. Remember, this is the reconciliation process. Quite necessary. If you do this reconciliation and if you get to zero, then even if you don't even read the reconciliation report you've done a huge internal control it's worthwhile to do but if someone was to ask you for the bank reconciliation report then they're not looking for this bank, bank reconciliation process they're looking for the report that's going to be tying out and reconciling our bank balance here to the book balance now note that although this is under the reports area you can go to the reports drop down banking and look at the previous reconciliation you, you need to remember that this report is different than other reports. All these other reports pretty much are being made from us, except like the budgets, basically. They're being made from us doing the data input. So they're being made from our data input. This report, however, is being is something that's tying out. It's a reconciling report. It's an internal control report that's added on to and has to go over and above you know something needs to be added the reconciliation process needs to be added also note that you want to make sure to save the bank reconciliation reports because the, it's harder to get back to the previous bank reconciliation reports 
because if QuickBooks was, was to make those bank reconciliation reports static, it would be more difficult to change something in the system. In other words, you might ask what would happen if I reconcile everything, I check these items off, and then I go into my check register. Let's see if I go to my lists and I go to my chart of accounts and I go into my checking account. You can see that these items have a little, little asterisk. That means they're in the process of being reconciled and then we'll check them off when they are reconciled. What if I reconcile them and then I go in here and I delete the transaction? Well, that's going to completely mess up my bank reconciliation now because now the data is not there. The bank reconciliation doesn't work. The reconciliation cannot really just cope with something being changed like the double entry accounting system has because you deleted something that was part of the bank reconciliation. So that means that what you want to have is a static bank reconciliation printed out. So if something was deleted after you did the bank reconciliation, then you can kind of go and, and compare what you have in your books to the bank reconciliation and to see who, you know, what was deleted and then look for who did it, who done it. But, but in any case, so let's go ahead and finally do it. Then I'm going to hit the button. Are you going to hit the blue button or not? That's what I'm here for. Okay. Let's hit the blue button. We're going to reconcile it. So, uh, ever, ever have to call the bank for your balance, try online banking. Okay. They're trying to sell me online banking. We have a whole nother course or section on that. Congratulations. Your accounts is in balance. All, uh, marked items have been cleared in the account register. Select the type of reconciliation report you'd like to see. Now you have the choice of the summary or the detail or both. We're going to look at both of them now. But just realize that the summary report is easier to look at, but actually doesn't give you the information you need. If you give the summary report to an auditor who asks for a bank reconciliation, they're not going to, they're not going to, that's not going to give them what they want because it's not showing the detail of the outstanding items. So you have to have the detailed report, even though QuickBooks adds way too much stuff in the detail report that you don't need. So let's go ahead and, and look at both of them. Also note that when you first create the report, this report displays current data. It shows all transactions that were reconciled on the given date. It also shows transactions that were uncleared. Okay. So when you first create the report, it looks like all other reports and you get this nice drop down thing and whatnot. But after you close this report and go back into it, you might see it in a different format. It might look more like a PDF file or something like that. So just be aware it's a, again, a little bit, a little bit wonky, a little bit different because of the nature of the report being different than the other types of reports. Let's customize it and go over here, fonts and numbers. Let's bring the size up a bit and, and uh, expand on this a bit. We're going to say, okay, yes. And okay. Now, this is the summary report. Now the summary report is great to kind of give us an idea of what is happening. But once again, it doesn't give us the actual vital information that we need. So let's start with it. So we've got the clear Let's. I'm going to collapse everything first. Let's see if we can collapse everything and just look at it in its simplest form. Now the beginning balance doesn't tie out here because that's the thing that we noted uh, was was not showing up on the first balance. We're okay with that because we added the 25,000 uh, as part of the items that we checked off. So, and that's, and this first part doesn't matter too much because we have the bank statement. So this first half is kind of mirroring what we did on the bank statement. And then we've got the checks and the deposits. These are the cleared transactions. These are the ones that we actually checked off. Again, if we had a proper beginning balance, this would just mirror what's on the bank statement. So it's just really telling us, hey, this is the bank statement side of things. That's why it's kind of redundant. And then there's the cleared transaction 6124185. So 6124185. That should tie out exactly. Uh, and, and it's not something that's really necessary because that's really where the, the statement starts, meaning this is the bank statement amount. What I want to know is what's the difference between it and the book amount. This is the book amount. There's the 88,645.25. That's what's on the balance sheet. That's the real bank reconciliation. If you asked an auditor, if you gave a bank reconciliation to the auditor, that's what they're looking for. But the difference is the uncleared items, the items we didn't check off, on outstanding deposits, outstanding checks. The problem here is that it doesn't give us the detail. It just tells us that there's six checks that are outstanding 
and that there's one deposit that's outstanding. So the problem is that we would want to know what those are so we can verify that those are actually valid checks by checking after the bank reconciliation date to see if they cleared the bank. And we just don't have the details. So that's why this report is kind of useless in practice, although it gives us a nice good overview of what's going on. So we had six checks that weren't uh, checked off and one deposit that made the difference of 2740340, which is the exact difference to reconcile us to, to the register balance, what's on our balance sheet. And then you have the new transactions down here, which again, aren't really part of the bank reconciliation process. These are transactions that happened after January. Why is it on the bank reconciliation for January? Bank reconcil, I don't know. It doesn't seem like you really need it, but they give you the transactions that happen after that point in time here as well. Okay, so that's a nice summary, but doesn't give us really what we want in detail because all I really want is this number and these six items listed out as well as this one item listed out to get to this number. I don't need this stuff up top. It's redundant. I don't need this stuff down here because it's after the cutoff date. So let's go to the second bank reconciliation report. This is the detail report. Same thing, but now they give us the detail as indicated. So I'm gonna customize. So now we've got way too much stuff because now we've got the same redundant or unnecessary stuff, but the detail of it. <laughs> but it gives us the stuff we need too. So this is the one you wanna make sure that you actually print out because it does have the stuff you need on it. So we're gonna say, open this up. Was that too, too much? So we've got the, the cleared stuff. So once again, this is all the stuff that we actually checked off. This is the checked off stuff. And then it, does, it doesn't let me collapse these, huh? And then we've got the deposits. So these are the cleared deposits. That gives us our cleared balance again, which is just in essence where the bank statement starts or the reconciliation starts because that's the bank balance. And then the difference is the unclear checks. These are the ones we didn't check off, but this time it gives us the detail we want. If I wanna double check and verify that these are valid entries, I can see whether or not these items cleared after the cutoff date or after the date of reconciliation, January 31st. And so that gives me some assurance that those are valid transactions as well as the deposit. And that gives us then the register balance, the balance that ties out to the balance sheet. The stuff below it is stuff that happened in February, which isn't really necessary for the bank reconciliation for January. So it seems redundant. The heart of the bank reconciliation is right here. You've got the cleared balance uh, and then you've got the uncleared stuff to give us to the register balance as of the date of the bank reconciliation. Now, again, what you want to typically do is save the bank reconciliation report, at least the detailed report, possibly both of them, because when you make the second bank reconciliation report, sometimes you can't get back to the previous one. So you might wanna have a, a hard copy record of it. And part of the reason for that is that if you were to delete stuff as you're going forward, so you deleted some of these checks or some of these checks, then that's gonna mess up your bank reconciliation. And, and that, and QuickBooks has no way to just automatically account for that. Now you've alt you've deleted something that you had said was reconciled. So what you have to do then is take the reconciliation report that you printed before stuff was deleted, compare it to the to your actual data of stuff that has been deleted and try to figure out what happened. And then you go find the person that did some prior period stuff and you know, you yell at them stuff. So that's what you do. So in any case, uh, that's that, that is that. We'll go on to the second month in future presentations. It should be easier for the second month.